Hey, I'm Jake, and I'm going to be talking about mixing smartphone audio. So I recorded a video with my iPhone, and this should be applicable to basically most smartphones that are good enough. The goal of this was to see how far we could take our smartphone device, and I just enjoy challenging myself that way. So this is the original audio. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours, and I told you... And this is the edited audio. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours, and I told you... So it's not perfect, but we improved it just a bit. So I'm going to break that down right now. I'm going to mute these guys. These are all my plugins. And I'm going to explain my process. It's basically like carving or sculpting. So the first plugin I start with is the RX Voice Denoise. And what this does is it dynamically hinders room noise or surrounding noise in whichever environment. So let's just do an AB. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours and I told you, listen up. So you can tell that the room noise is already going down but my voice is kind of boxy. So the next plugin that I add is a multipressor. I turn up the general frequency at, a, at around 1000 hertz, and then I compress it. You can see over here to the left bottom, compressor threshold, and I bring it down to negative 43 dB. So I wanted to dynamically modulate that frequency rather than just EQ it up and have a straight increase. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours and I told you... Now the reason why it's dipping down is because that frequency adds to the boxiness of the vocals. So the next thing that I did was I opened up an EQ and I boosted 124 hertz by 1.5 decibels and I decreased by, 400, uh, by 2 decibels 415 hertz. That kind of adds the bass that I want, and at 500, that's where my voice gets boxy. And this is all case by case. Every voice is different, and then if you combine the voice with the room, you'll have to make different edits for each scenario. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours, and I told you, <clears throat> listen up, random person. The next thing that I added is a compressor. Now, this is a bit interesting. The threshold is extreme. It's at negative 40.5 decibels, but my ratio is at one to two. And this is like the dry and wet knob. The input's the dry signal. The output is the wet signal. We brought it down. So it's kind of like parallel compression. And what this does is it glues all the vocals together, all the dynamics of the voice. But I wanted to consider, that's why I put the RX voice denoise I wanted to cut the room noise first because if I were to leave the room noise in, then everything would get louder, including the room noise. And you'll see later on, I actually add more of the denoise plugin subtly. So the next thing that I add is just an EQ. I cut out again at 200. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours and I told you. Now I got another multipressor. And this one, if you see it, part three, which is over here, it's again at negative 43 decibels, and it's actually acting as a de -esser. So let's pretend I was a potential client <clears throat> of yours, and I told you... Now I add another RX voice denoise. The threshold is at negative 0.6, and the reduction decibel is lower. But if you look at the graph over here, I only cut out this frequency, and I'm cutting out the room noise. As you can tell from my EQ, I cut my voice here, and now I want to cut out the room noise there even more. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours, and I told... Then I added another EQ, more surgical, just a few dips. This one is specifically at 5,400 hertz. It has a narrow Q, uh, Q ratio and it's at negative 6.5 decibels. After that, I added a general 
RX Voice Denoise plugin again, this time with low reduction threshold settings, and I just leave it at adaptive mode. So let's pretend I was a potential. Now, I put in a gain because we lost a lot of decibel from all the processing that we did. My gain increases by 6.2. This next multipressor acts kind of like a frequency-based dynamic limiter. So instead of limiting everything with a compressor, I want to limit some frequencies more than others. And I have two instances because I just love using some multipressors as a de -esser. So let's see how that works. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours and I told you, listen up, random. So the biggest difference is where I cut at the 200, which is about here, from the previous EQ. Let me see if I can find that over here. I now boost 100 dynamically. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours. And then I add a final EQ. What this EQ does is I just raise the highs. And I actually don't use this band. I used kind of like this guy over here, and I changed the width of it and dragged it all the way to the side. So let's pretend I was a potential client. Of so it adds a bit of brightness. The last thing that I did was to counteract the brightness with the sibilance, I tried my best to add a de -esser. So I just used this female voice de -esser because there are a lot of frequencies on this iPhone and I kept the strength of the de at negative 8.5 decibels. So what it does is every time a sibilance is detected, that S sound, it dips it down, this plugin dips it down by negative 8.5 decibels. So it kind of smoothens the sibilance. So let's pretend I was a potential client of yours and I told you. So that's how we went from this. So let's to become a YouTuber or a makeup vlogger or I to this to become a YouTuber or a makeup vlogger or I just want to record a sales pitch for my company. So I really enjoyed practicing as much as I could mixing sources that aren't considered to be as good. This is a good exercise and I hope that you guys learned something from this. So take care.